Hi, I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design, and today I'm going to talk about uh, the front axles on my recumbent bike. So, if you're not a recumbent bike nut, uh, if you're not a member of Atomic Zombie, and you're not interested in building a home built recumbent bikes, you probably don't want to watch this video right up front because it's going to be boring as watching paint dry. Okay, for the rest of us, <laughs> uh, us people that are members of uh, Atomic Zombie and who have built recumbent bikes, uh, I want to talk a little bit and then I'm going to show you what I did. Now, most recumbent bikes uh, that are home built usually are heavy, <coughs> and the reason why they're heavy is you don't have the exotic metals, tempered aluminum and titanium and, and even tempered steel uh, to build them out of. You're usually working with mild steel, just uh, inch and a half stock, inch and a quarter stock, whatever, and parts you can find. And because of that, it has to be thicker than the really exotic metals and the tempered metals. And because it's thicker, it's heavier. And most people that build these plan on uh, going off-road with them at some point in time, so they want them really rugged. So that even adds more weight because you overbuild them because you don't want them to break. Uh, and in the end, you usually, if you're uh, building a home-built trike, it's going to weigh at least 50 pounds, probably closer to 65. And that does affect your performance. Weight is uh, an enemy of performance. Okay, <clears throat> here's what I did. Uh, I decided that, and, and I, I never intended to go off-road. I built my bike to ride on smooth gravel roads. Uh, that was the intent. So I didn't need to overbuild it for all the abuse it would take off-road. That shaved some weight. Uh, second off, if it didn't need to be on there, I didn't put it on there. That shaved some weight. Uh, and I built everything, uh, when I built it, I tried to make it as light as possible. And I will get to some of that in a moment. But in the end, uh, my bike weighs uh, between 30 and 40 pounds, 35 pounds in there somewhere, which is extremely light for a home-built uh, trike. Now, uh, what I made the video for today was to show you what I'm doing uh, with the new hubs I got from Chopper US. Uh, these hubs came with bearings that have, uh, are made to go onto a 15 millimeter axle. Cool. So I uh, went to my local hardware store and started looking at axles and they had 12, 10, 12, 14, 16, no 15. Evidently 15 must be an oddity because my local hardware store doesn't have it. Uh, that kind of caught my eye. So the second problem, and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you what, what I'm talking about. It'll be much easier. The second problem is that if I go with a 15 millimeter axle made out of a bolt, uh, this is a pedal axle, and this here, this piece here, this piece is about an inch wide. This is the arm off of the off of the crank that that pedal axle originally screwed into. So this is the actual piece that it would screw into on the bike, cut off and set at the angle for center point steering and welded back on. So this is, as near as I can tell, a half inch thread, fine thread, national fine. Now this one is left hand and the other one's right hand. Well, I'm obviously not gonna be able to get a 15 millimeter uh, bolt that, dro that drops down to half inch national fine. And I could turn it down and thread it myself. It'd be a heck of a job, especially left hand thread, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, and taking this off and putting another thing on, I'm gonna disturb all my linkage and everything. And make a really large amount of work for myself. So, here's what I did. I found a pedal axle that was roughly the right length turn this around so it's the same. You can see that's the stub there that screws in. And what I did was <clears throat> I took this part, put it in the lathe, and I turned this down to 15 millimeter. So now that one bearing will slide right on and, and come right up against that shoulder. Life is good. Now on the other end is relatively small, but that's on the outside. There's nowhere as near the pressure on that that there is on the inside. And these, I don't know what these are made out of, but it's all you can do to turn them. They're really good metal. So what I did was I built an aluminum adapter 
that fits this on the inside and is 15 millimeter on the outside and has a shoulder on it to capture the bearings. And then once I slid the hub on and then slid the aluminum adapter on, which hugs this, I had about a half an inch of thread left and I took a regular nuts that came off of the pedal originally and double nutted it and locked them against themselves. So now I have basically an axle that after I thread this wheel I can just unscrew the ones that are on there and screw these on. Ten minute change out. No geometry changes, no re-threading, no cutting threads or anything. And uh, these axles are actually overkill. I have abused these axles and I've never bent one. And I'm, I'm working with 27 inch wheels here so they won't take a lot of abuse anyway, especially side load. I basically use the bike just to ride down the road uh, I, I turn, I'll do a 180 turn in the road, but I don't, I don't side load them like you would on a mountain bike or anything. So that's where we are, and I'm very pleased with the way they came out, and I really like these hubs. So as soon as I get my spokes and spoke them up and put the tires on them, uh, we'll change these out and go for a ride. Cool beans. So I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and bike. Take a friend, enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, go to Atomic Zombie and look around if you're going to build a recumbent bike. <laughs> if you've got any questions, email me or put them right in the comments where everybody can enjoy the answer. And have, try to have a really great day. Bye-bye.